Today's video is going to be quite an impromptu video where I'm helping a friend run some more cabling in his house. So, he's been doing a lot of these recently. But yeah, I've got a friend here who's got a new build house and he wants to run a bunch of cabling. Now, we probably won't get it all done today or really in this video and we've not really got a plan of how we're going to do it all, so it's probably going to be a bit impromptu and a bit random and a bit rambly, like most of my videos. But I thought I'd film it anyway just in case it's, you know, vaguely interesting. And I'll try and do a bit more of a focus on how we're doing the cable runs because people want to sort of see that. And what's going to be interesting with this project is that while we are installing a lot of network wiring and running basic cat sex to a bunch of the rooms, we're also running a lot of speaker wiring and doing a whole sort of whole home audio setup. So we'll be running speaker wiring to most of the rooms, putting ceiling speakers in the rooms, and that'll all come back to some very complicated high-end audio routing and DSP type stuff that'll be installed in a rack in this garage, and I'll show all that later in the video. So I probably won't focus too much on the network side of things in this video because I've shown that loads, you know, I've got a load of home network videos. So we will be running the cables, and obviously running audio cables is the same as running network cables, but we're running network and audio together. But yeah, it'll be also be really interesting to look at all this audio stuff we're putting in because this is going to be really quite cool high-end stuff that will be quite fun to play with. So yeah, in this house there's a sort of built-in garage, there's a bedroom above this. So the plan is to put most of it back to this garage. And yep, but there's also this massive 48U giant IBM rack. <laughs> it's probably a proper official IBM one. So, so there. Um, so that'll be going in this, in this garage here, so that'll be coming into here and all the cables will come out into this rack. Definitely doesn't need a 48U rack, but he got it for free, so we may as well use it. So yep, yeah, consumer unit and everything's already in here, so there's pl plenty of power. The only tricky thing we'll find is that the fibre comes into the total opposite end of the property under the stairs. So we'll need to get a cable from under the stairs into the garage, so we'll work out how that's going to work. And then all the network stuff will stay in here, so yeah. We'll need to figure out the cable routes as we go along, but I think the current plan will be to try and get a cable from the garage into the bedroom which is up here, and bring it up through the bedroom wall into the attic, and then we can drop it down into all the rooms. The only thing we'll need to bear in mind is that this, because it's a garage, this is a fire rated ceiling, so it's all fire boarded. So we'll need to make sure we try and seal up any holes we make in it properly. You can see they're sealed above the boiler there. Interestingly, behind this light here, they haven't actually fire sealed the hole, although it probably should be done, so we might maybe need to do that as well. But yeah, hopefully we can bring all the cables up through this wall, through the bedroom wall above, and up into the attic. But yeah, it's going to be a bit of a sort of random video just because it's not super planned out. But what I'll do is we'll just sort of do, do the work and I'll sort of jump in every so often and show how we're getting on because I don't want to get too in the way with filming it, but yeah, we'll sort of go away, see if we can figure out a route to get some cable from here up to the attic and I'll jump in if we, when we have more progress. So this is the wall in the bedroom, so this is right above that garage below, the sort of consumer unit's probably round about here I think. Um, and obviously it's got a wall in the bedroom behind the bed. So the plan is to cut a hole into this wall here at the bottom, so that'll allow us to drill down into the sort of, well, under the floor do some sort of similar cutting from the attic to get up into this wall. And what we'll do for now is we're just going to fit an access panel, just one of these um, sort of um, plumbing access panel things, because that'll be behind the bed so it won't be seen, and that'll be potentially quite useful, you know, we need to get into that again to run more cables. Of course, in the future, if you didn't want that, it'd be very trivial just to patch this plasterboard and you wouldn't even see it, but putting this in for now makes sense, just because it's much easier to do, gives access for the future, and realistically, with the layout of this room, you're always going to have a bed in front of this, so that'll do the job fine. So then we'll be bringing all the network of speaker cables up into the, into the attic. I'll be installing a few ceiling speakers, so I think it's one in the bedroom, one in the bathroom, bit, sort of stuff like that. What we'll also be doing, maybe in this video, maybe not, we'll be putting some downlights in this bathroom as well to replace this bulkhead. So we'll have, I think, three downlights, one there, one there, and one over the shower. So I'll maybe show that in this video as well. Don't treat it as like an instructional video or a particularly like planned out video. Just treat it more like a vlog of what we're doing here. So, yeah, time to go and figure it, go up in the attic, figure out what the sort of construction is like up there, and then figure out some cable routes. Okay, so here we are up in the attic, and we've moved back a lot of the insulation, and we've figured out basically where that bedroom is, so where we're going to try and bring the cables up. So over here we can see we've got a couple of bits of twin earth there feeding the socket down there, that's one side of the bed. The bed is then a bit further down than that, so we'll be coming up sort of in the middle there roughly. So we'll need to figure out how all that's going to work. There's then all this cable here going down for the um, bathroom light switch. That cable comes off here to the extractor fan there, and then goes down that hole there to the bathroom light. So when we do the down lights, we'll basically be doing the same, doing it all around about here. So because all the feed goes to the switch, it's dead easy. We'll just take that light off, bring this twin earth into one of the down lights, and just loop through them all. So that'll be dead easy to do. So yeah, we just now need to work out how we're going to get the cables from inside that wall up into the attic. We can see down here is where those original cables go down, so they just basically bored through the wood and they come up. But I just want to make sure we work out that we can definitely rod down straight from this, and this definitely goes straight into the wall. 
because when I did this before we drilled down from the attic where the cable seemed to go it ended up coming out through the plasterboard ceiling in the room because the cable kind of went in at an angle so we'll try and feed a rod down there just to make sure that's definitely you know the, definitely going straight down into the wall hopefully it will and then we can drill more holes and try and bring it all up so yeah time to go and do that I think what we'll also do while we're up here is we'll just put some boards down we've got some loft boards Obviously we can't actually board where the insulation is, but we'll just screw a couple of boards down temporarily just to provide a surface to walk on so we can walk back and forth with it falling through the ceiling. And then we'll take them up and put the insulation back down when we're done, but it'd be nice to avoid precariously jumping all over these joists every time I'm trying to get in and out because that's exactly how I fall through the ceiling. So, yeah. Time to go and do that as well. One other interesting thing I noticed here is, if you remember my previous video, it had uh, the house had metal framed walls and I couldn't work out what to do to protect the cable going through the metal, so I ended up putting a grommet in. But interestingly, that's exactly what they've done here as well. So this is also a metal framed internal stud wall. And there is also a grommet inside that wall protecting this cable going through it. So it's good to know that I kind of did the correct thing when I did it, as I you know I used a grommet as well. So yeah, obviously they've put, they've done the grommet and then put the plasterboard over it, whereas we had access to the metal. I think if we're doing the same here, we'd almost need to just hole saw a bit out of the plasterboard carefully, then hole saw through the metal and then put a grommet in. So it makes it a bit fiddlier, but we'll be able to work it out. But yeah, it's interesting seeing there's a is actually a grommet in there. Okay, so we've cut an access hole in the bedroom and we've worked out that roughly above the garage is round about here. So what we're now going to do is drill out, is pull saw a hole in the ceiling here and what we'll try and do is bring all the cables down through the wall and out through the ceiling and we'll put some sort of big cable braid around it to keep it neat and then we'll just have to fire foam or fire seal the hole that comes out of the ceiling, so yeah, that'll be fine. It didn't really seem to make much sense to bring it down into the wall because you have to bring it into the wall, up through the top of the wall, into the ceiling and then you need an access hole in the ceiling anyway to try and fish the cables between the two floors, so just to bring it all out of the ceiling makes sense, so yeah. What I need to do is hole saw out the ceiling and then try and bring the cables through, hopefully. Okay, so here we are in the garage and what I've done is I've cut a hole saw at the ceiling and moved some insulation out of the way and upstairs I can feel the bedroom floor. So in theory we can now go into that access hole we've cut in the bedroom and drill downwards and that'll get us into this area here. So we can then pull all the cables through that wall from the attic and bring them out through here. We'll have to fire seal this up, we can hopefully bring all the cables down and into the top of the rack. There's also this cable rod I've put in here and that is going off sideways towards the hallway and the plan is to get this through through the downstairs dining room where the understairs cupboard is and get the cable into the understairs cupboard for the ONT so we've pushed it along a little bit it's definitely catching on something so we don't know how far we've gone yet so what we'll do is we'll pull this out and measure how far we've gone and then we'll see how far we can get it into the, into the understairs cupboard we might need to open up the floor upstairs to try and work out our route but we'll figure all that out but what we'll do now is we'll take a look at the understairs cupboard to work out what we're dealing with here and I'll take this rod out and work out how far we've got with it so here we are in the understairs cupboard, and it's a standard affair that you get with all new builds, where the fibre ONT is located here, and then there's a phone line and ethernet run running to the living room. So what we need to do is we need to get a network cable from the garage into here, and that will then let us take the internet connection out to the garage, because currently obviously it's all in here, and there's like a UDM Pro and stuff down there, but the plan is obviously to get all this out, in, out in the garage. Just because where this is, it's under the stairs, and it's a really inconvenient place to actually run cables into because basically this wall here, it's a tiny little door and then the stairs run down here so actually getting a lot of cables into this cover is just going to be a total pain which is why we've not done it, why we're not putting everything under here because getting those cables in would be a total pain but this is where I mentioned we had the garage so the garage is through that wall there and those rods are kind of currently coming somewhere across the ceiling here and they're stopping somewhere here so what we're going to do is we're going to open up the floor upstairs which hasn't been carpeted yet see if we can figure out a way to sort of get that, that get those cable rods all the way through and it should be a straight run from the garage over there straight across here to somewhere here and if we can then drop a cable down into this wall here and get it into the understairs cupboard that'll be great because literally all we need to, the, to get here is one network run so if we can get that in that's fine so yeah and hopefully if we can do it we can do it with making all the damage to the wall on the inside of the cupboard but it's not super high it's not not the tiniest thing in the world, but there's not loads of space under here, so we may end up having to cause a bit of damage in the dining room, but well, we'll see. So, yeah, time to go upstairs into the office there and try and cut the floor out. And yes, I know this, this, the video's going all over the place in terms of order, we're just sort of trying things as we're coming across them, but yeah, we're still working on getting the cables up to the attic, but we'll take a quick look upstairs and see how we're going to get the cable into this understairs cupboard as well while we're at it. Okay, so we've cut a hole in the office floor just using the multi-tool. And that'll easily enough go back in. You'll just put a couple of buttons across the back and fix it back in, so that's perfectly fine. There was then this joist here that was in the way, that's what the rods were hitting. So we've drilled a hole through the centre of that and fed a rod through. And that rod now goes all the way through to the garage. So we'll go around to the garage and take a look at that coming out. 
But yeah, we managed to get our rods through from the office through to the garage. And then for context, the whole cupboard is basically down below here. So there's basically a clear run all the way from here, all the way along to here now. So we can get a cable all the way through to that corner and we'll just need to somehow figure out how to drop it down into that wall to get into the whole cupboard. But yeah, what I'll do is go and look at the garage. And there's the other end that rod in here. So yeah, that's coming out there. So what I'll do, because we need to get the rods back, is we're gonna just tape some old like cheap speaker wire onto that, pull that through just as a sort of draw wire, and we'll use that to then pull the actual network cable and stuff in. But yeah, that was a bit of effort, and there's also an extra hole here that we drilled when we thought the rod was in this area, but it actually was in the area where the hole we already drilled was, so that was great, so we'll just patch that up. But yeah, that's in there. Okay, so the others are now working on pulling a network cable and some speaker cables over to the office, or dining room, whatever it's called, and the <laughs> understairs covered mainly. So what I'm gonna do is get the, start getting access from in the bedroom wall here, which goes up the attic, down into the garage. So obviously they get attics up there, and that's where we're working at getting some holes up there. But we've now got this access panel behind the bed. So what I need to do is drill through the bottom plate of that, which should go through the bottom plate of the wall, through the floor, and take us into the ceiling of the garage where we've already got those holes. So hopefully if I drill down here, we should be able to get the cables through. And for that I'm using this, um, just a 25mm spade bit. This is one of those good Bosch ones that sort of draws itself in with the screw thread on the end, so these are really good. And I'm also using this extension kit. I think it was from Screwfix, it wasn't that expensive. And it's an absolute lifesaver because it basically makes the drill bit scarily long. But it means if you're doing something like this, you can get a much steeper angle on it. Whereas if you only had a bit on its own, you wouldn't actually even be able to get the length there. But you'd have to go at such an angle because the drill would start hitting off the wall. So using that is an absolute lifesaver because it gets you so much, like, a much steeper angle to get through. So I'm going to try and drill down, hopefully not pop out randomly in the, in the garage wall or something, but drill through there and hopefully get down into the garage. And I think we'll do two holes here just to get enough cables up, but I'll just do one for now just to see how we get on. Okay, so I've now drilled two holes, probably can't make them out, but two holes down inside that wall that go through into the underflow space. So I can take a rod, I can set that down one of those holes, and that'll go all the way down. So if I take the length of that out, you'll see obviously the length there is way more than the distance of that to the floor. So that's now going actually into the garage. So we've already tested, you can put that through and you can access that rod from the garage. And it's from the same hole that that cable to the dining room and understairs cupboards going, so that's great. So we can just start pulling cables in through there. So all we need to do now is we need to go up in the attic and do the same and put some holes at the top of the wall so we can get cables as a clear run down inside this wall. Which will be a bit tricky because this insulation is a total pain but hopefully we'll get around it. Okay, so here we are in the attic and what we've worked out is basically this is where all the cables are running down. So they've basically notched out this bit of wood and then drilled through there. So we're going to do the same here. We've worked out where that access panel is. I'm not only really, some of it's covered by this. So what we'll do is we'll just multi-tool out sort of here to here-ish, cut that bit of wood out and then we'll be able to drill our two holes from under there. So. Hopefully that works, hopefully there's no screws up from the bottom in this area here, but hopefully that'll be fine. So try and multi-tool that out, get those two holes through, and then we can pull the cables down into the wall. Okay, so we've now got that plug out. It was an absolute nightmare because it turned out there was a nail going through it, so it was going through from this side into this wood at the back, so I couldn't get it out. And then the head fell off the hammer, so I ended up like literally using the head of the hammer to lever out. It I looked like some sort of mad person trying to do it, but got it out eventually. So that's now out there. So what I now need to do is drill two 25mm holes through this bit of wood here, and that'll get us into the wall. And here we are from the attic, and now you can see we've got two holes, and we've got the rods going down into that. So now I need to pull that rod through into the bedroom. Okay, so now I've found the rod in the bedroom, so we're now going to feed this through and poke it through into the garage through the holes that we've already drilled in here. And there we go, that's the rod now pulled through into the garage. So that rod goes all the way up the attic. So we can now tape some draw wires onto that, get that pulled through. Do the same for the second hole that's running from the garage down to here, just so we've got two draw wires in, then we start pulling actual cables in. Right, so it's a moment of truth, we've now got the draw wire taped on in the garage, we've got the rod up here, so in theory if we pull this all out, we should hopefully have that draw wire up in the attic. So let's keep pulling it, it's going to be quite a lot, a lot of rods, but eventually we should see some draw wire. And there we go. So that's the draw wire now up here, so we'll just pull up a bit of slack up here, leave loads of slack in the garage, and do the same for the second hole. Okay, so that's those two draw wires in, so they go from the garage all the way up the attic, with loads of slack on each end. So yeah, that's that in. So what we can now do is we can very easily cover up this access panel in the bedroom, put the door on it, and that's basically hidden behind the bed. Now of course you could patch the plasterboard, but that also gives very easy access if new cables needed to be run in the future. And with the layout of this room, the bed is only going to ever be in this position, so it'll always be covered by a bed. So yeah, that's pretty good. 
And as you can see, apart from that, there is literally no other damage on this wall. So, yeah, we managed to do this without any real damage apart from an access panel behind the bed. So that's pretty neat. So what I'll now do is we'll do a quick, quick round, show what else we've done, then we'll come back. So here we are in the office, and this is where we've now got some more cables coming through. So we've got a network cable here, bit of Cat6. That'll go down into that understairs cupboard, hopefully get the connection from that ONT. And we've got some speaker cable here, which will be used to serve a speaker in the dining room below here. So that, there's loads of slack on that, so there's plenty of slack to get it really anywhere below here. Obviously there is joists in the way, but we can always drill through either this one here to get into the space here. And then if we put the speaker, say, in the centre of the room, we can use a speaker hole to drill this way into this joist and we can kind of join it all up, so that'll work quite well. And to get down into the understairs cupboard, what we're hoping we can do is drill a small hole out the chipboard floor here and get a big long drill bit and drill sort of at an angle down through here, which would be the top plate of the wall that borders the understairs cupboard. And if we do it far, far enough along that the understairs cupboard is, well, here, we should be able to get down into that wall and get into the cupboard, so hopefully that will work out. And then here we are back in the garage, so what we've now got is those two cables that you saw in the office for the dining room, so there's the network cable and the audio cable already in, and there's those three draw wires. So one of these will do the uh, dining room, one of those is attic left hole, and the other one's attic right hole, so that's two holes that go up the attic. So that's all coming out there. So that hole there, we didn't need it, but realistically it's not too bad that that's the one piece of damage that we need to patch because that's not actually that bad. We've, we've got a plug to put in it somewhere, so we can just patch that up very easily. Might even do a quick video showing how to patch that because people keep asking for it. But yeah, so we've now got this hole here that all the cables will come out of, bring them down into the rack through some sort of probably like a braided sleeve thing like I did before, and then we'll just need to sort of fire seal this up so we put some fire foam in there or something because this is fire rated plasterboard. So yeah, that's the end of the first day. So hopefully we'll be coming back later in the week and finishing this off. So yeah, hopefully next time you see this, it'll be a couple of days later. Cool, so we're now back after a couple of days and we're ready to continue doing this. So this is one of the draw wires that goes up to the attic and we're going to start pulling in some speaker and network up to the attic. So these speakers will serve the bedroom and then the network will also serve the bedroom and then later we'll put some through to the office as well. So we've taped on a speaker wire and a network cable onto the draw wire and we'll start pulling this up. Because we've only got one box of cable and one box of speaker or one real speaker wire, what we'll do is we'll pull the speaker wire, one speaker wire and one network at the same time to sort of save time pulling them, so we're pulling them up together, so that should hopefully save a bit of time. So, yep, what I'll now do is go up to the attic, pull this, and hopefully be able to pull these two through up to the attic. Okay, so now we're up in the attic, so we can pull that draw wire, and hopefully pull those cables up. And also, while all these fancy YouTuber electricians are all like using their uni lights and we've got the voucher codes, um, here I'm using a sad lamp attached to a power bank, so... I mean, it does the same thing, I suppose, but if you like want to sponsor me, well, um, that might work better, but yeah. What we're going to do is pull this up. So, come down here, try not to fall through the plasterboard. And yeah, I didn't show it earlier, what I've done is I've just basically screwed some loft boards down. So obviously these won't stay there because the insulation needs to go back, but I've just laid them across and just put a few screws in. So they're kind of a secure walkway to get through, which is quite nice. That makes it a lot safer, less likely to fall through the ceiling. So, now we are here, I'll start pulling up. Seems to be going. Got it. There we go. So that's the two cables pulled up there. Okay, so I've now pulled up two more cables. So I've now got two network and two speaker. They're all coming up the same hole there. We'll move over to the other hole now probably to sort of share the load between the two. And they're all coming up. So the two speaker wires are just sort of left over here with enough length on them. We'll put them into the bedroom, which is just down here, into ceiling speakers. And then for the two network cables, one of them's going to go in behind the bedroom TV where there's already an aerial point, and the other one's going to go to the hallway for an access point. So what I think we'll do for all the cables is just to sort of save having to move the insulation out of the way, and I suppose you could also argue to keep them away from the mains and stuff. We're going to bring them up here and along this sort of timber here, which to be fair is the exact same as I've done over there for the solar PV DC wires. You can maybe just about make out up there. They've brought them all in there, so it's obviously fine doing that. So we'll bring all the cables along this timber here and then we'll drop down the cross, these cross beams at the appropriate point 
and then at that point we'll clip it along the ceiling joist and into wherever we're putting it. So for the TV in the bedroom, that's going to go down that hole. You can see there there's already a cable going down. That's currently two bits of twin earth for the ring and then an aerial connection. So we'll squeeze an extra network connection down there and that'll go behind the TV for the, for the network for that. And then for the access point, we'll bring it somewhere here. We don't know exactly where yet. We'll need to try and work out where it looks best from downstairs. So I've left loads of slack enough to bring it all the way to here. But I think the access point will probably end up going around about here somewhere. And again, we'll just clip it along and then drop it down for an access point. So yeah, that's all those in. Now there is more cables to go in. We want at least a couple for the office over there. We want speaker for the bathroom down here. Maybe a couple little extra bits. But to sort of you know finish stuff off as we go rather than just getting all the cables in and not actually having anything finished, what we're going to go and do now is we'll get the cables all clipped up first of all, and we'll try putting a couple of ceiling speakers in and get some of the network cables down into the walls just to kind of see some progress as we're going rather than just sort of you know running loads more cables today but still not actually having anything functional. So. Yeah, time to get those cables clipped, get the speakers cut out, and actually try and get some stuff installed. Cool, so what we'll now do is we'll get the ceiling speakers in. So we're here in the bedroom, and what I think we'll do is we'll place them sort of in line with the light. So the beams up in the attic run this way, and as far as I can tell, the light is centered between two of them. So hopefully if we line the two speakers up, centered with the light, one either side of the bed, that would look quite good. Now, for the ceiling speakers we're going for, we're going for a couple of different models throughout. In the bedroom, we're using these, which are JBL Control 24C Micros, which are quite high-end, decent ceiling speakers. And there's different ones for the bathroom that are IP rated. But that's these here, seem quite nice. Metal front grille, which we won't put on because you won't get that off again. Two-way speaker in there. And then the way they mount is they've got these sort of, what do you call them, lugs. So these will twist round and then screw down. And the way these work is there's screws on the front that you would use. So basically what you'll do is you'll put it up in the ceiling and then screw these through three screws in, which will turn this round and pull it down to clamp the ceiling. They also provide a bunch of different fixings for things like ceiling tiles or whatever. They also provide this, which I think is more to like fix in between like studs or whatever, or into timber. You can just put it straight into plasterboard. But because we've got access from above, what I think we'll do is we'll put this in, in the attic and then have this fix onto it just so it's not clipping straight onto plastic where it's actually got something a bit more solid and metal to fix onto. So yeah, that should be quite good. And then as for connecting these, we'll show the connections properly later, but you basically got this little metal cap that comes off, which has some what, look like 20mm knockouts in it. So all we'll do is we'll knock one of these out and put a grommet in to bring the cable through. And then behind that, it's literally just got a sort of standard terminal block. So we'll just wire into that. So yeah, if you need to get two of them in up here. Now, one thing for ceiling speakers is to think about the fire rating. Because we're on the upstairs, up, upstairs floor right now and there's no habitable space upstairs, we don't need to worry about that because there's nothing upstairs. The ceiling speakers we're putting in downstairs, we'll need to think more about the fire rating. So I probably want to put some sort of um, fire hoods or something above them. Just because up here, even though they've got metal cans, they've got like plastic clips that might melt if there was a fire. So it's not an issue upstairs, but downstairs we'll need to think about that. But yeah, what we need to do now is get the two holes cut out in the ceiling and get the ceiling speakers in. And then additionally, I'll need to go up in the attic and clip those cables in neatly, but yeah. Once these are in, we'll actually have something to try out. Okay, so now I've gone down in the bedroom, I've worked out where we want the ceiling speakers, and then we've poked a bradle up down there, you can just about see it sticking through the plasterboard, and that should be the centre of the further away speaker. And it is annoyingly under that bit of wood, but trying really all the measurements, you're either going to be under that bit of wood, the diagonal one below that, or the other speaker is going to be below this one here. But we've measured, and the speaker should just fit under it, so hopefully we're fine. So yeah, the next thing to do is go down, mark two circles on the ceiling, and cut out a circle there and there, and get the speakers in. And there we go. So we've now cut two holes in the bedroom ceiling, and the ceiling speakers fit in there, we're fine with checks. And even with that timber up there, they fit in perfectly fine. So yeah, definitely very happy with how they've turned out. So what we now need to do is go up in the attic, clip the speaker cables along, get them in place, get the speakers installed, and then we can wire it back to the rack. But we'll get the cables clipped in place and then come back and show terminating the speakers. Okay, so that's the speaker cable in for the bedroom. So what we've now got is the cables come up there, they're clipped there, clip across those joists there, and then they go down along there, clip down, and it goes down that hole there. And then the other one goes along that joist there, and you can see it just clipped at the back and then goes off down the hole. 
All I had was twin and earth clips and I was really hoping I could fit two cables into one 2.5mm clip but they just won't quite fit. So I think if I was doing this again I'd try and get some like 4mm or 6mm twin and earth clips and that would be really good because you could then clip two cables simultaneously but it's fine, they hold it pretty well, just have to use more clips really. But yeah, that's all good there, so what can now happen is we can get the ceiling speakers in and then we can put all that insulation back down and that'll cover those cables up completely. And I've tried to like run it sort of as neatly as possible but you're not going to hopefully stand on them but yeah, that's them all in there. So yeah, time to jump down to the bedroom, get these speakers terminated, hopefully we can get the amps on at the other end, and we can actually try and get some sound coming out of them, which would be really quite cool. Okay, so that's two speaker cables hanging down. That one's got a sensible amount of slack, this one's got a bit too much slack. But one thing we didn't do when we pulled them in is we didn't label which cable was which. So all I've done is I've stripped this one back and I've just twisted the wires together, and what I'll do is I'll go down to the garage with a meter and I'll just look for which wires, which of these cables are shorted together and which one isn't, and I'll be able to tell which one's which, and then I'll label them up. So yeah. Get that sorted, then we get some of, that, some of the apps connected and get the speakers in. Cool, so I'm down in the garage and I've just basically connected my test meter onto the two wires and I've just checked and it's given me a reading. So that this is the cable that I've shorted out on the attic and then this is the other one, so that's good. So yeah, now we can get these labelled up and get the rest of the equipment installed and get the ceiling speakers put in, that's quite important. And there we go, that's it labelled up. So yeah, that's it ready and then put the other one being put into the amp, so now we're going to put the ceiling speakers in. Okay, so we've already got one speaker up there and it looks really neat. Obviously there's a grill to go over that. So we've got the other speaker here and what I've done is basically ferrule the ends just because on the speaker it goes into a sort of chalk block style terminal. And obviously you don't need to ferrule it, it's just speaker. It, it just feels like it gives a nicer connection. So yeah, ferrule them up. So we just need to put those into the speaker. And then additionally, you've then got the sort of back plate for the speaker which has knockouts. So I've just put a grommet in there just to protect the cable. And there's loads of slack that will go, up, go back up inside the ceiling. It just means we can drop the speaker down low enough to actually do the, do the screws up because on the one over there there wasn't much slack and it might kind of, kind of try to screw it above your head which is a real pain. So yeah, get that on there. And in terms of mounting it, I'll show it once it's mounted in the attic but it's dead easy. You just hold it up, tighten the screws, these slide out and tighten against the plasterboard. But then what we're also doing is we're using those metal rings, I think it's over here, yeah. This metal ring which I think is meant to more be you know fixed into the ceiling. But we're just putting this above the plasterboard as well, just because it gives that bit of better fixing. You're actually clamping onto metal rather than plasterboard. So yeah, time to get these connected and get the speaker up in the ceiling. I won't be able to show it once I've connected it because of course it's then going to be suspended from the ceiling and I won't be able to grab the camera, but what we'll do is we'll get this in, get it connected and then put it up in the ceiling. Okay, so that's both speakers installed. So you can see it's in there and you can probably just make out little clips that are holding it against that metal ring. So there's one speaker there and the other one down the back there. So we'll get these covered up again with insulation and then we'll, well before we do that, we'll go and try them out. So hopefully these sound good. It's time to go down and we'll take a look at the kit we've got in the garage to power these. So here we are now in the garage and here's all the setup we have. So before we demonstrate it all and listen to some music playing which isn't very exciting, we'll take a look at this setup because this is a bit crazy. And I don't understand all of this, this is my friend very much doing all this, but I thought we'd take a quick look at what we have. So currently there's two main components here. The first one is this, which is an amp. This is our Crown CTS 8200. And this is our, what's that, 8 channel amp? Yeah, eight, an 8 channel amp. So this basically just takes 8 channels in and amplifies out to 8 channels on the output. This, on the other hand, is our Tessera server IO. It's basically a very sort of high end DSP audio routing thing. So we've got in the back, it'll probably actually make more sense. So, around the back here. Um, basically what this has is it's all modular, so there's loads of different cards. Some of these are input cards, some of these are outputs. So you see black connectors are outputs, blue connectors ANC inputs, orange AEC inputs, green connectors inputs. So these are all inputs and these are outputs. So essentially what you do is you send audio inputs into these cards here, it's got a lot of them, and take audio outputs from this, and this is all line level stuff. And what this then does is it offers full sort of DSP and audio routing type capabilities. So if we look on the laptop, this is hard to navigate around, there we go. What you can see here is the actual software interface. It almost reminds me of no dread. So what you're able to do is build these flows up where you're say taking in two channels here, doing sort of EQing stuff, click that, that'll be a graphic EQ that'll bring up. So you can do EQing on it, and then you route it to all the outputs. So this is really cool. So obviously right now all we're doing is just taking one input and routing it to the two speakers that are, or the two of the outputs. 
but you could do this to route audio to different rooms, you could do different EQs for different speakers. It's extremely powerful. And the whole thing's obviously networked, so it's actually really pretty powerful. So with the network control, you can do quite a lot of cool things. So one example we were sort of just discussing was that you could have an external input to do announcements, for example, a doorbell going up that you're ringing or something like that. And it could then do audio ducking. So you could say have a Raspberry Pi connected to this as an analog audio input and have it set so that when, say, a smart doorbell's ring is rung, it will play a ring, a doorbell sound through this and it'll also send a command to this to duck any music that's playing and then play that doorbell to all the rooms. So you could do really cool stuff like that. And it's really flexible, so it's things like this. So you can have a block like that, which is level, and you can name, give that a name, for example, that's name channel one. And then on the Tessera documentation, there's this whole like interface where you can like pick what type of block you'd want to control, what attribute you'd want to control. So I want to control a level, I want to increment the level by two. And it actually generates the command string. So then all you would need to do is send this command over Telnet or SSH into this, and that would increment the audio level of that block. So you can kind of see with this how flexible that could be. So things like, yeah, having a doorbell announced to all the rooms or probably a lot of other <laughs> things. It's, you kind of get drunk with power with this sort of thing, but yeah, that is so cool. So another idea I've had just, obviously it won't work here because it's not in my house, but with that Telnet protocol, what you could also do is if you think where at home I've got these in-wall touch screens that are integrated with Node-RED, Node-RED can easily Telnet things. I mean, I have it Telnet, in, Telnet into my AV receiver. So you could have Node-RED tel, Telnet into this and essentially have like a small in-wall touchscreen in every room and have that control audio routing to that room. And if you factor in that that's a, you know, 50 pound touchscreen and a little PC or Raspberry Pi running Node-RED, that's really cool. There's no lock-in. This will just be, you can fully control this over open protocols like Telnet and SSH. Whereas a lot of the other systems are all very proprietary, you'd have to buy their in-wall touchscreen and their network stuff, and you're going to be paying thousands. So with this being so open, and there's no software licensing for it, it's actually really, really cool. So yeah, they're quite expensive devices, but you can pick these up for maybe £600 second hand. Having the fully open protocols and no software licensing is actually really cool. You could really get sort of down to integrating this into a lot of really cool stuff. So yeah, I'm just, I'm struggling to think of things to do with it because it's so powerful, but it is so cool. So yeah, basically all that's doing is it just takes analog inputs in and routes out to the amplifier. And if we look here, currently all we're feeding in as an input is just this Belkin AirPlay receiver. So it's just currently we're going to receive AirPlay. Obviously there'll be a lot more inputs going into this. And then for the outputs, we have the two cables going out for the speakers. So that's coming out there. Then down here we have the amp. So the amp just has obviously eight inputs and eight output channels. So we have the two outputs of the Tessera coming down into the amp, and then the two outputs of the amp here then go up to the bedroom speakers that we've put in. So yeah, that's kind of what we've got there. Obviously there's scope for loads more inputs into this, potentially bringing, for example, input audio outputs of TVs back to here and feeding them into this. So you can route the TV audio to different room rooms, having an output of the AV receiver coming into this. You could, especially had a receiver with pre-outs, pre you could bring that back to here. You could do a lot of really cool stuff with this. I won't go into a huge amount of detail now, but potentially in the future I might do you know further video once this is all finished and show the whole setup, but this is really cool. So yeah, right now we've got this one amp here, which is an eight channel amp. There's another amp to go in as well. Um, that's down in the corner there, but that, there's another amp we'll be using as well. So I have two amps to do different rooms just so we've got enough, enough amplifier channels. But yeah, that's what we've got there. So yep, the audio is coming out the AirPlay receiver into the Tessera, which is doing all the audio routing and DSP type stuff. Audio outputs come out here at line level into the amp, which amplifies them to the speaker level. And these are the two cables that go around and up into the ceiling and up to the ceiling speakers. So, well, we can now go and listen to them. It's a bit, a lot of complicated stuff just to get some music out of a couple of speakers, but ultimately this will be driving a lot more speakers with a lot more inputs and it'll be so powerful. So yeah, time to go up and see, well, listen to them working. Cool, and that's the speakers installed with the grills there. So they look very neat. Of course you've got the classic issue of you know never getting the right colour of white to match the ceiling, but it doesn't look too bad. They're coming across, across a lot more brown on the camera by me looking at it. They actually don't look like that in real life, they look quite grey. I think there's just a lot of different colour temperature of lights going on and it's throwing it off, but they look really neat up there. I really kind of want them out in my own house now because they're really cool. So yeah, they look really, really good. So what we'll now do is we'll try and listen to them. So I'll, I'll put one of my videos on just so you can hear sort of speech and then we'll play some music just to sort of hear what they sound like. Of course, it won't come across that well on camera and I've not got my audio recorder with me, but 
But yeah, we'll see what they sound like. Cool, so just like just sort of like hear what it sounds like. I've got one of the videos queued up on the TV. Um and what we've got here is got an Apple TV installed. And what's really good is Apple TV can obviously cast the airplay. So that little air, airplay receiver that's down in the rack is actually going to is actually receiving audio from the Apple TV. So it's actually gonna the sound that's going to the TV will actually come out of the ceiling speakers. So we play this, we'll hear what it sounds like. Okay, this is gonna be a bit of a different video to usual, where I attempt to refit my own bathroom as a total novice DIYer who knows nothing about really plumbing or anything like that. So, yeah, bit of a different video, but I thought I'd film it anyway, partially just to sort of play about with while I'm, you know, giving something to do while I'm doing all the work, and because it could be quite entertaining, or interesting, or educational. I don't know. I don't know how this is going to go. So yeah, for speech, they actually sound really good. Way bit better than any sort of TV speakers. It's actually really good, and especially being above a bed. If you're lying in bed, that is going to be absolutely amazing sound, so that's really, really good. What I'll we'll do is I'll skip through the video and just try and find some YouTube audio library music as well and play that just to give an idea of music and then we'll see what that sounds like. Cool, so we've got some music from the YouTube audio library set up so we'll hear what that sounds like. So yeah, that's what they sound like. They're not super bassy, but they're really not that bad. Definitely all good for music. So, you know, the concern was obviously with these because they're designed more for background music and commercial settings that they might not be good for just actually listening to music. But as long as you're not expecting something too bassy, they're pretty good and the clarity is really decent. The other thing I thought I'd show is that I'm up in the attic right now above these speakers, which are playing super loud downstairs. And there's barely any sound transmission up. Yeah, of course you can hear the music, I mean I don't know how much it comes across my microphone but it just sounds like there's a speaker in the room downstairs and you're hearing the sound come through the plasterboard. Barely any of the sound up here is actually coming out the back of these speakers. They seem really well sound insulated. Like, yeah, if you feel the back of them, you can feel them vibrating. But this music is super loud downstairs and it's, it's audible up here, but not in a bad way. So yeah, this bodes really well, especially for the ones we're putting in downstairs, that the sound from them shouldn't be much of a problem upstairs. So yeah, that's actually a really good sign. And these aren't even covered with insulation yet, so I imagine if you cover these with all the insulation, which, you know, it's quite a lot of it, that'll def deaden the sound even more. So yeah, that's some demonstration of sound quality there. Definitely very happy with how these have worked. So yeah, we can now continue to get a few more speakers installed, and yeah, see what else we find. Okay, so that's the bedroom now done. So what we'll now do is we're going to go through and put a few more speakers and network cables and audio cables and stuff into different rooms. But I won't show each of them in loads of detail just because I've already shown quite a bit of detail and I don't want this video to drag on too much. So I'll sort of just do little status updates as we're going along. So the next thing is in the bathroom. So this is the ensuite, so it's through from the bedroom. It's got the ceiling speakers. I'm going to put a ceiling speaker in here. So we already have this LED bulkhead light fitting. It's kind of centered in the room. So the plan here is to take this out put a ceiling speaker in its place and then we'll put three down lights in. So we'll put a down light probably above the shower, up here and then over there. So go away, do that and then we'll come back. And yeah, we'll be pulling another, I need to pull another speaker cable in from the garage but that should be fine. Okay, so we've got the bulkhead down and we've cut some down lights in. So we're going to put one there, one there and one over the shower there. And then yeah, we've got the cables in for them so we can just connect them up. And we've measured the ceiling speaker so it's going to go there. So it'll kind of bridge between the shower and the rest of the bathroom and the base setup so it's centered between these two down lights. So yeah, we'll get these put in. As for down lights, we're using these, which is the Integral Evo Fires, which is the same things I've put, it, put in at home. All of these are the non-recessed version. But they're quite nice because they're fully IP rated. They're fire rated, even though they don't actually have a big can, which is quite neat. And what I quite like is that they've got a very, very thin bezel, so they're really flat to the ceiling, which is nice. So they'll be really neat up there. So yeah, we need to get these connected up and get them in. And then we can work and get the ceiling speaker in. 
And there we go, so that's the download it's put in. So it's got them all looped in. So the original cable comes in the first one, then it loops over to that one, and then over to there. And it's nice actually here because this is the first time done, down, down, done downloads where I've got access to above. So I've been able to actually click the cables to join neatly, which is nice. So yeah, that's them all there. So let's get these pushed up into the ceiling. Now we'll take a look at them on. And there we go, that's downloads installed. So we've put them all up. And I really like how these look. They're so neat against the ceiling because they're so flat. So we've got the three of them in there. So if we turn downloads on, downloads on, that's them going. They're very, very bright. Totally changed the feel of the room. And even though these are apparently 38 degree beam angle bulbs, they don't seem to have really much of a sort of halo on the wall, which is good. Um, I was a bit worried about that, but yeah, that works really well. Looks really good in the shower as well. Massive improvement over what was here before, which is just that bulkhead thing. So yeah, it looks really good. So next thing we're going to do is pull another speaker cable in, which we'll do off camera, but we'll just use that draw wire and just pull yet another one up to the attic. Cut this out, and will put a ceiling speaker in here. Cool, so we're now cut out the hole for the ceiling speaker and run another cable in. I've already started putting the terminals on, so we're using a different speaker here, which has a sort of grommet plate here, and uses a sort of plug-in connector, which is nice. It's also got a different connection for looping out to another speaker, which is decent. So yep, that's there. And the speaker we're using is this here, which is a Cloud CSC4HW. And this is basically a high humidity sort of suitable speaker, so it's IP rated, so because it's installed in the bathroom, literally above the shower, we're using that. We've also got other cloud speakers for other rooms with just a few JBLs. So the JBLs are in the bedroom, maybe somewhere else, but they're using the cloud speakers mostly. But yep, this is the model that's going in here. The other ones aren't IP rated. And I think the other, the non-IP rated ones then have the benefit of being ported, whereas the IP rated one isn't ported. So you might not have a good base response, but it's in a bathroom. So yep, that's there. And this is the grill for it, which actually looks really stylish. That just clips over magnetically. And it doesn't have any sort of trims. This actually looks really, really nice. Other than that, it's basically the same as the other one, so in terms of mounting it, we just need to connect it in, and then it's the same thing, basically, it screws in the front that you do up, it twists these out, and then these clamp down and clamp the plasterboard. So, yeah, we just need to plug that in and get it up in the ceiling. And there we go, that's the speaker installed, so definitely looks really neat. It's perfectly centered between the two down lights, and it kind of sort of straddles the shower, so it's not really in the shower, even though it is IP rated. You can see it's just it just stops just short of the shower, but it means when you're in the shower, you also hear the sound from it, which is really good. And yeah, that looks really neat up there. So yeah, time to go down and get this one connected up the amp and, well, see how it sounds. So that's all installed and set up in the DSP stuff. So we can now, well, listen to it. And it's not bad. It's, it's, it's maybe not as good as the other ones, but for an IP rated speaker, it's not bad at all. Plus, if you're actually standing in the shower, and you see, shut the shower door, it's still perfectly okay in here, because obviously the sound comes above the glass, which is good. So that's it now working, and we're now set it up in Sierra to play from all the speakers simultaneously. So yep, you can hear them in here, and then if you come through to the bathroom, the bathroom's playing as well. So it's actually really good, but also because it's coming all through the same equipment, there's no latency at all. You don't need to have any, even think about that, so it's really, really good. So obviously, as you can see in here, we've got the stereo pair with two speakers, but in here we've now only got a single speaker. But what's really cool with the Tessera setup is you can actually set it up to mix stereo down to mono. So this mono speaker is actually playing both left and right channel. So I'll pop there and take a quick look at how that's set up in Tessera. So here we are back in the garage with the Tessera side of things. We also, also put the old bathroom light down here, which is much better than that old bathroom. So it's very similar to what we had before. But basically what we've now got is we've got the same two stereo channels coming in. But there's now this mixer that mixes the left and right down to a single channel. And that's then output here. So then this all goes to the three channel output, which is then the two bedroom speakers and also the bathroom speaker. Then this block here just lets us mute individual speakers so we can kind of have the bedroom and the bathroom or just one or the other. So yeah, that's so how you can do it with the Sierra system. You can do things like mix stereo down to mono and stuff, which is actually really, really neat and really flexible and 
yeah, it's really good. So yeah, that's sort of look at what we've done here with Sierra. That's the bathroom speaker in as well now. So we'll probably start tidying up now and kind of wrap up this video just because otherwise it's just going to drag on if I keep just adding more speakers and just running more cables. It's, just, it's the same thing over and over and over again. So what we'll do is we'll tidy up, show you the little bits as we're go um, going along and then we'll come back and wrap this up. But yeah, that's us now. We've got three speakers in and then also a bunch of network cables that we'll still need to terminate. But for those, we'll just terminate them to a patch panel here and it'll be exactly what you've seen in loads of other videos. You know, UDM, probably some sort of unified switch put in the rack is not that exciting. I've done a lot of that, so this stuff is definitely a lot more interesting. So there we go, that's it all installed. Well, we've also not remotely finished it, but we've now got three ceiling speakers installed and a lot of cables and all the routes figured out. So we'll sort of end the video here. I'll do a quick whip round showing a sort of conclusion of everything we've done. But there's obviously a lot more to do. We need to get more speakers in, more network runs, do all the downstairs stuff. But there's no point showing that in this video because it'll just drag on. If we find anything interesting doing it in the future, I might do future videos showing it. But the main thing was showing all the, you know, how we're doing the cable routes and showing some of this audio stuff, which is pretty cool. So I'll do a quick whip quick, quick round showing everything we've finished off. So obviously we've got the rack in the garage here, which is now moved into the side to keep it out of the way. And you can see we've got the Tessera and the amplifier. Obviously there's more amps and stuff to go in there, and all the network and stuff. And if we were in the back, you'll see that we've now got all the cables coming out the ceiling and that hole's been patched up. So obviously these will now need to all be dressed into the rack. We'll need to figure out some way to fire seal that hole. The simplest form would just be to put some sort of fire expanding foam in it once it's all done and then bring the cables out. But it'd be interesting to see if anyone has a better suggestion of how to fire seal that hole, but especially like leave it accessible for like adding an additional runs in the future. You can also maybe see up in there where we're kind of bringing the cables through. So these three cables are going off towards the downstairs floor and that's where all the ground floor stuff will run. And those cables are all going up to the attic. So obviously you've got spe some one speaker cable that still needs terminated for the dining room and a bunch of network that will need terminated. All of these will just, well, all the network will just go into the patch panel, there'll be a UDM, maybe some sort of switch, stuff like that, that will be installed here, fairly sort of standard stuff. Then for the speakers, the current speakers we've got connected, we've got the three, so we've got the master bedroom, well the two master bedroom speakers and the one for the ensuite, they're all labelled up neatly. And that all goes into the amp, so, yep, that's everything installed in the garage, so yeah, all we really need to do now is obviously pull in a lot more cables get it all dressed in and fire stop that hole. So what I'm going to do is we'll quickly go through and take a look at what we've got in the other rooms just to sort of sum it up even though you've seen it all already. Cool, so just to roughly conclude what we've done, we've now got two ceiling speakers in the master bedroom, those are the, those are the JBL ones. And then through in the ensuite we've now got three GU10 downlights replacing that old bulkhead which we've filled, it still needs painted but basically it disappeared. And we've also now got that IP rated ceiling speaker installed in here, so that's pretty neat as well. Then through in the office, we've now got a few more cables as well. So we've got this speaker wire for the dining room below. We've got this network here. And this network will come along and go down into the understairs cupboard where the ONT is. We'll actually pull another one of these along as well. And we'll explain that when we go down there. But yeah, these will come along here and they'll drop down somewhere here into the wall in the dining room and go into the understairs cupboard. So here we are in the dining room. So this is immediately under that. The, the hole in the floor is around about here. So what we'll need to do is we we'll need to bring those cables, well, the network cables down into this cupboard here. So we'll drop it somewhere inside this wall, we've not quite figured that out yet, that'll be done in the future. I'll bring it out to a network port somewhere inside here. And the reason we need to run two is because right down there you can see there's already a network run. That run goes through to the living room because there's already a port there. And while we will run additional ports through to the living room eventually, we also want to keep this one available. So what we'll have is we'll have two network runs to this understairs cupboard. One will take the ONT through to the garage and the other one will carry a connection from the switch which will just link directly into that port there and that will link up that port in the living room. So yeah, we'll run two cables into here and then yeah, there's a UDM currently down there and I should probably turn the light on. So yeah, that's what we're doing in here. And then here we are in the downstairs hallway, I've not really shown this before, but what we'll also do is we'll want to put some ceiling speakers down here. What I think we'll do is currently that run that goes through to the dining room um, where we had that hole in the floor, hole's about here, it goes across the hallway. So what we're going to do is we'll put some down lights in here and use those to help drill through the joists to get down. I'll basically run down here, put some ceiling speakers in the kitchen in here, probably some down lights as well, and then through in the living room we'll also put some ceiling speakers as well. So yeah. And then down here we also obviously want network behind the TV. So what we'll probably end up doing is cut, potentially either cut a hole in the wall here or have to lift the carpet upstairs, but basically in some way drop some cables down into this wall just to put some ports behind the TV. And then finally, here we are up in the attic. Unfortunately, the sad lamp plugged into power banks died, so yeah. Union Light, please sponsor me, or I'll just need to buy something. But yeah, um, we're up in the attic. Still a fair bit more to do up here, but that will all be done 
in the future. But just sort of roughly sum up what we have. Obviously a lot of insulation to go back down. We've got the cables that come up there. All the network stuff, well the two network runs up here are just currently kind of just sitting loose. We'll need to put these in properly. Ultimately they'll just clip along this joist here and then drop down to where they're required. We'll show the other end of them in a minute. But then the speaker cables, two of them come up there, go under that insulation to the two ceiling speakers in the bedroom. And then this one here comes down, under where I'm standing, I'm totally standing on it, probably shouldn't do that. Um, runs along here, around here, and then it drops down behind that insulation there where we have the other ceiling speakers installed, basically just under there. And then we've got the downlights, that's one downlight there, one down there, and one over there. So, yeah, that's three downlights installed as well. Obviously that board will come up, all, the, all these boards will come up and the insulation will go back down. And these are insulation coverable downlights, so that's perfectly fine. So yeah, that's what we have there. As for the rest of the sort of network, basically we've got that, we still need to obviously remotely <laughs> finish these off. But I think I've showed this before. One network run there will drop through that hole there, and that'll go in behind the TV. We might drop addition the TV in the bedroom. We might drop additional runs into there, so there's also ports on that side of the wall in the office. Not for the desk, but maybe for like a printer or something. And they'll bring a couple more network runs in along these beams all the way to the far wall, and they'll drop down into the office on that gable end there, and that'll feed, like, feed the desk and stuff like that. So there'll be a couple of runs going into there. And then finally for network upstairs, we've got this one here that will go to an access point somewhere here. So there's no point po poking it through because we've not got the access point. We don't know exactly where it's going yet, but we'll poke that through to here. We'll also put some additional ceiling speakers in, so I think we'll put a couple over the hallway, for example. Maybe something in the office, probably not, but we'll probably put a couple in the hallway, which will probably be around about here as well, so we'll need to run them in as well. So, as you can see, it would just be a lot of the same if we just kept pulling more stuff in and demonstrating it all. But hopefully that kind of showed, you know, kind of what we're doing. And you'll notice there's those, like, white speaker wires, like the cheap ones. They're acting as draw wires, and we've left them in. So it means if we need to pull additional wires in, we can easily go down to the garage, type them on, and pull them up. We don't need to move the bed out of the way or get into that access panel. So actually pulling additional cables in will be really easy. So yeah, all we need to do now is try and get some of this insulation back down and have some sort of semblance of normality up here and get the place tidied up. But yeah, it's been quite fun. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you found this interesting. It's a bit of a departure from networking, you know, doing more sort of audio type stuff. But hopefully people find that interesting because it's quite cool playing with all this audio kit. And hopefully the, you know, we pulling in, sort of demonstrating the cable runs a little bit more was something people were looking for. So hopefully people found that useful as well. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. And potentially might see some of this in the future if we do a future video. It just really depends if we actually, you know, if I'm, if I'm here with a camera when we're doing it and if we actually come across anything that interesting because it may just be more pulling just cables in. But yeah, hope you find that interesting. So yeah, thank you very much for watching.